G'day dudes, so today we have a game called Project Warlock that was released in December of last year, which is 2018 and uh, we'll just, we'll go around to it and just talk about it. G'day dudies, here we go. Project Warlock is PC only and was developed by a company called Buckshot Software. It's a sprite based old school FPS in the same vein as the original Duke Nukem 3D, Shadow Warrior and Redneck Rampage, all while using an updated version of the very same 3D build engine. The same engine that created those games some 23 years ago. Off the bat, the music's great. Sitting in the menu, there's plenty of options. Key mapping, game systems, gives you a lot of options for changing the filters that overlay the game, with stuff like increasing scan lines, some colour options and strength of like static distortion if you're into that kind of thing. Only issue I had was trying to make the game bright enough to see in the later maps, but they do give you a light spell for a reason, so if you utilise it, it's up to you. And I have to say immediately, I love this game. <laughs> Everything about this game. The levels, the weapons, the enemies, uh, the pacing, the secrets, it's all, it's all great. But that's what we're here to talk about. One of the things I noticed immediately was the amount of secret areas in every level. I was just running along the walls spamming space by everywhere. They're pretty rewarding. Sometimes you would find not one but two secrets. You'd find a secret within a secret. And you don't find that very often in games these days. So that was surprising and it kind of kept me playing a little bit trying to find all the secrets. I usually don't care in these kind of games, but uh, it was fun. Oh, hey dudes, uh, just, just really quickly, don't forget to subscribe on YouTube, like on Facebook, and follow on Instagram. The game boasts 60 levels, 5 worlds, 72 enemies, 38 weapons, 8 spells, and 12 perks. I barely used any of those spells, or any of those perks, or really any of those weapons. I kind of found my favourites, and I uh, stuck to them. I tried others, but uh, you know what? Uh, you, you, you know your favourite, right? And you just keep using it. I recorded this footage two months ago, and I've somehow lost my save game. But my favourite was the shotgun. I upgraded the shotgun, and it had like a, a finer range, and I could shoot from a range, and it did a lot of damage. And also the pistol. I upgraded it with, I think, some kind of explosive round. And uh, they were my go-tos, along with just some random weapons every now and then. Uh, but they did the trick for the majority of the game. I'll also give you just a very quick rundown of the weapons that I picked up. I also missed some, so I picked up the dagger and the axe, which is upgradable. The pistol, the staff, the shotgun, which is my favourite, the double barrel shotgun, which I added a flame uh, flame thing to it, uh, dual SMG, minigun, grenade, rocket launcher, crossbow, and the laser gun. I'm missing the flamethrower in the footage, but it's pretty underwhelmingly bad. So I found a glitch like midway through the game and it kind of overpowered me for the rest of the game but it was awesome and I'll show you why. So when you find a secret you gain a little bit of XP. I didn't notice this until there was a button on the wall that had no limit to how many times you pushed it. So once I figured this out I spent the next few minutes gaining XP and leveling up. This is a great time to also talk about the upgrade system. As you gain more weapons you'll notice they're upgradable in the hub world. There will generally be one or two upgrades per weapon. What I found was either one was worth it or none of them were. Each time you level, you earn yourself an upgrade point. That can be spent either upgrading your weapon or upgrading your spells, which I didn't touch because I don't do spells when I can have wicked guns. I just wasn't interested and perhaps that's my own flaw. Being the only spell I actually did use lit up the room a little bit. Now perk points, they're totally different. Every five levels you earn yourself a perk point that can be used to upgrade your strength with melee weapons, overall hit points, spirit for your magic, or capacity for your ammunition. Instinctively, I was all hit point and capacity, and it served me well in the later levels, not having to hunt for ammo as much to destroy the waves of enemies in the last level. You can also use those very same perk points on game-changing perks, like sprinting everywhere which helps you avoid damage and finish a level faster, shotgun expert which gives you two shells for the price of one on pickup, and quick healer which gives you five HP on pickup, and so forth. After you finish one of the five levels, you'll face a boss, and they're all generally pretty easy, but they are fun. One thing I did notice was when I fully upgraded my minigun, I could just destroy a boss in maybe 30 seconds. So that was the way to go for the rest of the game, especially with the first glitch I found, I kind of cheesed the entire game about halfway through. And I don't regret it because it was still fun. All the five levels have an entirely new brand of enemy. Ground types range from squishy monsters to flying types. Most of the flying monsters that shoot projectiles will die from one blow from an upgraded weapon, even in the later levels. Some look like they draw inspiration from other shooters like Serious Sam 2's first enemy. Some enemies share a likeness to Dune's worms, coming from underground to try and eat you up and take all your shit. Others are more pathetic and will just try and consume you from land while absorbing as much damage as they can until they can't take it anymore. The whole range of enemies is super fun, another thing that this game really nailed. Uh, my favourite part is probably the amount of different types of robotic enemies they have. They're just fun. And all of these mentions are just from 2 out of 5 of the different levels. The gunplay is also really fun. 
And with a high refresh rate monitor, which is your best bet, the twitchy shooting, huge amount of enemies, pretty large campaign, just overall polish, makes it a fun experience and well worth for $17 or $12 US. And I would recommend it to anybody like myself that had been itching for a shooter that wasn't some AAA garbage. Like my last review, The Hong Kong Massacre, it's this studio's first video game. And they've done a really good job, leaving me only wanting a sequel. So uh, I hope that comes in a few years. So yeah, she's a mad fun game. I'd recommend it. It's on Steam and GOG, only on PC. Um, probably, for, probably for the better. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And I'll probably see you next time. Make sure you follow me on my stuff. Uh, pump out some more videos. All that, all that fun jazz. If there's anything you, you'd, you'd like me to review or look at, uh, send me a message and we'll get it going. So thank you a lot. See you next time.